Hi there everyone, special guest Grant Sanderson from the YouTube channel 3Blue1Brown is wearing the white gloves of destiny. Do you know what you have to do? I'm going to open a drawer yes. and going to choose a document Yes. and read it. This will tell us where downstairs we will find oh, the okay. said document okay. or object. You must do it with your eyes closed so it is completely okay. random. Okay. Go ahead. What drawer are you going to go for, Grant? Uh, going right. You're being very specific. It's almost like you know what you want. I just want one towards the back that usually might not get much love. Keith, mm -hmm. we could be in business here. Edward Southall, 1711. Do you want to read that for us there, Grant? Of the extraordinary facility of a boy of seven or eight years old in performing arithmetic operations. And he's from Dublin, which uh, mm -hmm. I'm half Irish. So You've, you've selected a calculating boy. A, an Irish calculating boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, This yeah. is amazing. You got yeah. a mathematical one. Yeah, that's... What are the odds of that? Uh, most most don't seem very mathematical, no? This is... James, you are excited, sure. That's pretty big. All right. That's pretty big. All right. And Irish. Normally we do like a second draw in case it's a dud, so we've got like a backup, <laughs> or like sure. a provisional. Yeah. I mean, I think you're looking pretty good there. We're looking but let's, good. let's get a second one anyway. Okay. A second draw, eyes closed. Eyes closed. All right. What do we got here? Or Morton Edward, sending by desire of Sir B. Brody a bust and pedestal for the Royal Society. If we can find out what that bust is, and if the bust is still here, this has the potential to be an all-time classic. The White Clubs of Destiny. Yeah, you know how to wear those. They guide towards greatness. Yeah. Brilliant. So now we go downstairs and find, find your treasures. Wonderful. Oh, it smells like old books. Yeah. This is very Indiana Jones. Yeah, this is like, holy of holies now. This was the one he originally submitted. So this is the one that went to the printers, yeah. Oh, so wow. he produced the first edition. Lots of corrections in still. And so those are like Newton's fingerprints. That are like uh, that'd be the printers, the compositors. Ah, tell him it's Newton's. <laughs> tell it. Yeah, okay. It's Newton's. Are, are the figures in here? No. No, that's a separate no. process. But th but this is Newton's handwriting, or is it someone else's? No, it's, else it's Humphrey Newton, so his secretary fair <laughs> copied it for him because his handwriting was so terrible. <laughs> okay, okay. So really there's very little of Newton himself. Other, but it is like what, the, what, what would be what would be whoa he's fussy isn't yeah. he yeah oh. no no no, no just, oh. <laughs> so let, let's just put that away then where's something with newton's handwriting on it <sighs> don't worry there's plenty of newton handwriting this is like when they were investigating who invented calculus oh that is interesting this is all oh. newton's letters all leibniz's letters did newton write that no isaac barrow sent that to john collins okay, okay. Oh, and it's rubbish, isn't it? We'll get no, to no, new no, no, handwriting no. in a minute. If, if we yeah. have Isaac Barrow, that's... God, it's critics. That's just you know. as good. He wants, all, he, wants, he wants the fairy tale. I mean, it, basically, if it hasn't got Newton's, like, thumbprint on it and, like... I want a, I want a self-portrait of Newton I'm that holding he that, holding that day's margins. newspaper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've got a lock of his hair. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, you want to genetically test The only thing I... Yeah. <laughs> so this one is LBC 40. So it's letter book copy 14. Okay. And that's just over here. Letter book 14. So this is the one, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, but we also have to get some MC, miscellaneous correspondence for you. So let's go and have a look for that. That'll be the swing. Eight. Uh, it's a big one. All right, Keith. It's the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. How well has Grant actually done? First of all, the math prodigy letter, the young boy, what have we got? Well, we'll have to have a read of this and just, just see what he says. So it's a letter from Edward Southall, Esquire, to Dr. Sloan, that's Hans Sloan, of the extraordinary facility of a boy seven or eight years old in performing arithmetical operations from Dublin, 31st of July, 1711. So he begins, In the midst of my hurry of business, I could not help communicating to you a thing most extraordinary that ever I met in my life. This morning, one Mr Morgan, a member of Parliament, brought me a son of his who is now between seven and eight years old, who has the wonderful faculty of casting numbers up in head that ever I heard of. The first question I put to him was to multiply 71 by 71. Go on, what is it said? Go on, Grant, 71 by 71. Uh, four, nine, uh, oh geez, four, nine, one, four, one. I don't know. Okay. I just wanted to put you under pressure. <laughs> yeah, we'll, let's get a small child. Check the answer eight for us. I couldn't do it. And after he had walked two turns in the room, ah, uh, so you needed to walk around the room twice. Okay. He brought me the total. So I, actually, that wasn't very fast. That, 
twice, that's twice around the room. <laughs> that's not that impressive. I seven. Would, yeah. I, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I then put him a second question to multiply 783 by 783. He's always squaring, so he's probably mm. like... It's still hard. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me 783 times 783? Yeah, the answer's just there on the screen underneath. <laughs> yeah, underneath. very good, Brady. Yeah. And after he had walked eight or nine turns oh. <laughs> in the room, he told me it made 611089. But yeah. when I told him he was wrong, <laughs> he walked back again and made the sum 613089. I was then curious to make him repeat which way he had worked it, and it would make you laugh to hear what a parcel of figures and additions he makes of it, for he begins just the reverse of the way that we work it by the pen, and says 7 times 7 is 49, that is, says he, 490000, and so at last, till he comes to 3 times 3 is 9. I believe Signor Isaac Newton would be wonderfully pleased to see a child <laughs> do some things so extraordinary. <laughs> I am, sir. This is just like a proud dad. Yeah, he is pretty much a proud dad. <laughs> just so we're clear, this mm. math prodigy boy walked nine times around the room and then got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then he then he got it right. Then he got it right. It is interesting that they talk about how he was thinking of it, you know, going from the biggest numbers forward. Because I think that's much more intuitive. You know, if you think 71 times 71, you're like, oh, well, loosely it's like 70 times 70. And then let's refine from there. And the way we teach kids is usually kind of backwards, where it's like, don't think about intuition, right? <laughs> let's just go with the rules that are going to work um, with, with the least error, right? but that he's doing it intuitively with a little, you know, he's prone to error. I feel like this boy's, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Well, if he knows Isaac Newton, he will. <laughs> we did have a second poll we from did. Grant, mm. and this was about a bust of some description. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is this it here? This is a letter. So this is a letter sent in to the Royal Society. So what so year is it? 1867? Yeah. And it's sent from West Brompton. I have been desired by Sir B. Brodie, as Benjamin Brodie, to send to the Royal Society the accompanying bust and pedestal. I have no doubt that Sir Benjamin Brodie has already informed you of this intention to present them to the Royal Society. Signed, Morton Edward. Well, how do we know? How do we know what it is? Well, we don't. So but we can work it out, maybe. How are you going to work it out? Special Keith magic. Wow. All right. <laughs> this is good. So the letter doesn't tell us what the bust is, but Keith thinks he'll be able to figure out what it is, and if it's still here. Yep, it should be still here. We hope we can find out what it is, and whether or not we still have it. I'm intrigued. Yeah. All right, Keith, I see here you have something that says a list of medallions, busts and statuettes in the apartments of the society. I know what your secret magic is now. Yeah. And what was the one that Grant pulled? Well, this is a, a 1940 list of the objects that the Royal Society had at that time. This would be in Burlington House. And uh, almost right at the top of the list, here we've got Sir Benjamin Brodie, president of the Royal Society, plaster bust, original model of the bust by W. Baines. Donor is Benjamin Collins Brody, and the date, which is the key thing, is 1867. So this is, is likely the bust of it. It's an original model, it says. So this is what the sculptor made as a, as a precursor to, to actually doing something mm. more finished. We no longer have any of the plaster busts. Oh no. So um, one of the, the tasks that I do from time to time is investigate where these things went to, uh, if, if there are museum objects that we no longer have in the collections and so on. So this is another one to put on my list. The Brodies were medical men, so they were physicians, and he's Sir Benjamin Collins Brodie, so quite a big figure for the mid-Victorian period. I think you've done really well with the mathematics one, and this was a chance at white glove greatness, but the lack of the bust, like that would have been just like, the, if we then pulled out the bust, that would have been like amazing. Yeah. So, what do you reckon? I, I reckon... Busted. Busted. <laughs> Busted, yeah. Now, I can hear some of you complaining. Haven't we just replaced one tricky setup with another? This might make for a cute analogy, but how is it progress? It's true that counting the number of light bounces is hard, but now we have a helpful trick. When the beam of light hits the mirror, instead of thinking of that beam as reflected about the mirror, think of the beam as going straight while the whole world gets flipped through the mirror. 